Let me uh, remind you where we're at at this point. Now, we're, we're talking about to undertake entrepreneurialism. And what I'm going to suggest to you in the next few minutes, using the standard model for planning that we've talked about for analysis of planning, is so we're going to look at entrepreneurial vision, entrepreneurial strategies, entrepreneurial projects, and entrepreneurial tactics. So we're going to literally come right down through the model of vision, strategies, projects, and tactics. And we're going to look at, in a large sense, if you really wanted every American to have in themselves the sense of if, if you grew up in America planning to undertake things, planning to be an entrepreneur, what would it be like? Interestingly, it's very different than the working model that came out of World War II. Remember, in World War II, we mobilized 15 million people, put them in uniform. Big systems did big things. We had the Manhattan Project to invent the atomic bomb. We had a huge fleet. And we got in the habit of, if you look at the Eisenhower cycle, you have the habit, and, and it's legitimate in total war, of a large structure doing large things in a very orderly manner. And so the big became the thing we, you know, we, we admired IBM, we admired General Motors. But now look at an entrepreneurial society. What would you favor? You favor the small, the beginner, the one who undertakes. Now imagine you rewrote your tax code Right now, if you work for a big corporation, you get a tax break if you buy your health insurance. If you're self-employed, you don't. And just start with that and work your way through the whole thing. So imagine you started and you said, you, and right now if you're in the welfare system and you go out and start to work for Amway and you report your earnings, you get kicked off welfare. So you might earn enough out of Amway to begin to learn how to sell and to begin to learn how to work and to begin to learn how to have money. But if you got just that first rung of the ladder, ba basically what we've done in, in the welfare state is two things. We've said, in terms of big and small, that government, which is very comfortable with the big, the president can meet with the head of the three auto companies. You can't meet with 20 million small businesses. So in a sense, the government tilt between big and small, the bias is towards big. The big, and it's not because of any corruption, it's because they're easier to find. They're more organized. So you say, let's pass a regulation. The big already have lawyers on their staff. It's the small who have to go out and hire a lawyer. So the big says, not a big deal. This is not a bad regulation. Just more work for my lawyer. The small goes, that's my margin of profit. OK? Second, to understand an entrepreneurial free society, you have to have a ladder. This is a ladder. I can't draw very well and I can't write very well, but just bear with me. What the welfare state does is it, we don't have another color. It says you better jump from here. This is a stick person. <laughs> you got it. I just, this is not a giraffe. <laughs> and, uh, in a healthy, free society, you're down here. You're poor. You get to the first rung. What the welfare state does is it says, if you can't jump from here to here, we're going to punish you. So you can't go out and get a part-time job. It's illegal. You can't go out and begin to undertake. It's illegal. You couldn't open up a, a beauty shop in your, in your public housing apartment. It's illegal. Yet how did people historically rise? They worked at home, they did odd jobs, they, they got a little bit of money, they learned the habits, and three to five to six years later, they're up here. We've killed the first five years of rising. Made it illegal. And that's why you've got to revisit this whole thing. You know, a smart society favors entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs provide the resources for helping others. I mean, if you're gonna, if, you know, if you're gonna tax the successful, it's helpful to, it's, it's, it's helpful to have lots of successful. And if you have enough people, if you have enough people who are successful, they give away enough money. Andrew Carnegie endowed 2,563 libraries. He built them personally. The deal was the city or town would provide the land and they would provide the books, he'd provide the building. 2,563 personally given libraries around the world. Now in order to do that, he had to be very successful. And yet today, we don't, we, there are a lot of people who love jobs but they hate job creators. So they punish the job. It's sort of like loving eggs and hating geese. 
So you keep shooting geese so they can't get any golden eggs because you'd be happy to have eggs, but the stupid geese keep coming in. Very important to say, if you really want, un if you really want energy and success and wealth, you'd better encourage lots of people to be entrepreneurs. Now, culturally, we're still okay. We haven't totally broken down despite the, the discontinuity from 1965 to 1995. Americans favor achievement over bureaucracy, learning over education, health over health care, housing over housing authorities, safety over government effectiveness, and job creation over taxation and regulation. And literally what I'm suggesting is you can take the ones we favor, achievement, learning, health, housing, safety, and job creation, and start saying, all right, what would the changes be like to get to there? The changes culturally, the changes in the society, the changes in government. Or to put it differently, look at the difference between entrepreneurial business and bureaucratic business, entrepreneurial government and bureaucratic government. I mean, government doesn't have to be bureaucratic, and business is not automatically entrepreneurial. There are big corporations that are so bound up in red tape and so bureaucratic that they are basically parallel ver variations on the government. And there are some government systems that are so lean and so creative that they are like the, most, they're like the best of the entrepreneurial systems. So the question is not where is the structure, it's not government versus business. The question is are you entrepreneurial? Are you problem solving? Are you creative? Are you focused on the market and on the customer and on getting the job done? Or whatever you happen to be, private or public, are you slow and dominated by procedures and dominated by red tape and dominated by people who tell you the rules rather than the achievements? And those are psychological. Now, another factor here, and this is going to be a huge factor in the next few years, a healthy, productive system is very decentralized. I can't say this too strongly. Very decentralized. What you want to do, I mean, it's interesting if you watch the way I'm, being, I'm speaker. People think I'm the strongest speaker in maybe 70 years. The fact is, I decentralize all the decisions. Dick Army runs the House on a day-to-day -day basis. We have a very strong committee chairman. My strength comes by delegating back out to lots of good people for them to get the job done so that they are solving the problems. I, I called Joe Paterno a couple months ago and asked him about being a head coach. He said one of the keys is to let your assistant coaches make mistakes. Because if they can't make mistakes, they can't grow. So you've got to delegate, get it away from you, let them go learn. You want a very decentralized society. You want local people making local decisions. It's a totally different model from the sort of centralized command bureaucracy which grew out of Ludendorff's management of Germany in World War I and then was gradually permeated throughout the modern world and ended up with people thinking you could plan health care and you can plan education. You need centralized national plans. Totally wrong. You need a centralized national direction. You need leadership that says we're going that away. But when you say go west, you then want 20,000 individual wagon trains. You don't want to try to have one centralized you know, government wagon center. It's a very different model. 